are about to present a special concert as part of our centenary celebrations for Robert Shaw. And so I thought I'd come to a special place to tell you a little bit about it. On Sunday, April 3rd at 3 o'clock, in Symphony Hall, we'll offer a performance of the greatest unaccompanied choral work from Russia, The Vespers by Sergei Rachmaninoff. Though written for presentation in a concert hall, this music evokes the vast spaces of Russian cathedrals and the ancient musical traditions of Russian and Greek Orthodox faiths. So I've come to the most beautiful Russian Orthodox church outside of Russia for this edition of Evans's Corner. It is the St. Alexander Nevsky Cathedral in Paris, the first Russian church in France with money provided mostly for its construction by Tsar Alexander II himself. Rachmaninoff was raised in the Eastern Orthodox faith, but like many composers, think of Verdi for example, he grew to be suspicious of organized religion when he was an adult. But he retained the deep faith and love for the artistic expressions of Eastern Orthodoxy, such as the incredible icons that surround me. He wrote what he called his all-night vigil in a white heat of creativity in two weeks in 1915. The world was already at war. Russia had been dragged into it through that horrific nexus of alliances that found the Tsar committing Russia to war with countries who only months before had been allies. The premiere of the Vespers took place at a concert designed to raise money for that war effort. The Vespers is actually a collection of 15 short prayers set to music. Some of them glorify the Virgin Mary, some of them praise Jesus, and many of them are simply prayers of supplication. The music Rachmaninoff wrote takes its inspiration from the Greek and Russian Orthodox chants you would hear in this church on any Sunday morning. But what Rachmaninoff does is elaborate and elevate the original melodies to breathtaking levels of choral virtuosity to which only the greatest choruses can aspire. But if you're familiar with the Rachmaninoff of the piano concertos and the symphonies, you'll recognize his unmistakable musical language. For lack of a better way of putting it, there is an overriding sense of nostalgia a level of the very deepest emotional expression that transcends any religion or creed. It can move you even if you don't understand a word of Russian. The Vespers does what any great work of art can do. It elevates thought to a sublime level that can completely bypass your intellect and go straight to your heart. The sound world of this piece is overwhelming from the lowest bass voice you'll ever hear in a concert to the thrill of a virtuoso choir shouting for joy with all its might. Rachmaninoff so loved this piece, he asked that one of the movements be sung at his own funeral. Current chorus director Norman Mackenzie could have chosen all sorts of choral pieces for a Robert Shaw celebration. Why the Vespers? Well, late in life, Mr. Shaw began a project where every summer he would gather choral singers and scholars from all over the USA for an intense short seminar which had a concert and a recording attached. They all came here, to France, to a tiny town in the Dordogne region in the hottest days of July to immerse themselves in choral masterworks. The Vespers was the project for the summer of 1989. One of the choristers from that summer later wrote of the experience, and I quote in part, the emotional intensity of making this recording with Shaw was overwhelming. All these years later, I began to listen to the recording again, stunned at its power, overwhelmed by the artistry Shaw brought to it, and convinced that the spirit of Sergei Rachmaninoff was present in that 12th century cathedral in Gramat, France, on that hot late July evening. When you join us at 3 o'clock on April 3rd in Symphony Hall, 
permit yourself in your mind's eye and in your heart to be here, in this space, whose ceiling seems to reach to the heavens, whose acoustic is as rich and deep as those famous Russian bases. These icons, the incense, are all simply physical manifestations of a spirituality that inspired Rachmaninoff to write a masterpiece. And it inspired us in this special year to share it with you. From the St. Alexander Nevsky Cathedral in Paris, I'm Evans Miragis for the Atlanta Symphony.